Hello, welcome to InfoHub. In our headlines, police using Intel to dismantle carjacking rings. Japan government funds a women's disaster management project. And we update you on preparations for Mashramani. Stay tuned for the details of these and more. The future of Guyana has never looked better. Our nation is on the cusp of a development program like never seen before. While Guyana is now emerging as an energy giant through the discovery of massive reserves of oil and natural gas, it is your government's intention that the huge benefits emerging from this will go where it matters most, to you, the people of this beloved country. There is a surge of confidence in the way Guyana is governed once again, and the level of investor interest is unprecedented. Guyana is poised to become the breadbasket of the region, and the pace at which this nation will grow through prudent fiscal management will be nothing short of impressive. But more than anything else will be the way every Guyanese, regardless of color, class, or creed, becomes a part of this historic period of national transformation, sharing in the wealth and well-being of it all as one Guyana. Here's our first report. Crime Chief Paul Williams says intelligence-driven operations continue to dismantle carjacking rings. Paul McAdam has this report. Williams said that diligent detective work and the launch of similarly timed raids across the country have resulted in the smashing of at least three carjacking rings. If you really follow out of Suzai, where we are, Suzai and Ikuru we would have had numerous persons. And then we also know even targeting some of the vehicles that are working taxi to see if they are indeed legitimate in terms of engine and chassis numbers and so on. Crime chief added that the number of the vehicles have been linked to other crimes across the country. Some of the vehicles were part of um, armed robberies. Vehicles were linked to armed robbery in Linden, all years day. Vehicles were linked to armed robbery on the East Coast in the vicinity of Better Hope area. And vehicles were linked to armed robbery some way on um, Rupert Craig Highway, just in the vicinity of the Russian embassy, where a person was uh, being robbed and also a vehicle was taken. According to the crime chief, charges will be laid following a detailed investigation with all the relevant agencies on board. It is an investigation that really requires a lot of, um, you know, very in-depth information because it doesn't only require the guy in the police force alone, we must have GRA involved because we must need confirmation as it relates to whether the engine and chassis number correspond and so on. But we are working seriously in terms of having charges instituted in view of legal advice. Williams is asking citizens who've had their vehicles stolen or hijacked in the past to make contact with the police force to ascertain ownership of those that they have retrieved. We're able to retrieve a number of vehicles. We're able to retrieve numbers of our accessories some of them still carrying the um, numbers of the vehicle on them. And as a result of that, we want to open to the public to come check out those accessories and vehicles that we have. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. Online training is being modeled for prisoners rehabilitation, says the director of prisons. Here's more. Guyana Prison Service Director Acting Gladwin Samuel told InfoHub consideration is being given for the introduction of online training as efforts to rehabilitate inmates and reduce repeat offenders. I'm quite sure as it relates to um, broadband becoming something readily available across Guyana more and more every day, um, soon we'll be able to tap into that aspect of training so that those high-profile prisons who we know are in need of exposure to training, but for various reasons cannot be um, placed into the general population for such training. They can utilize such systems to be able to um, enhance themselves. This practice is already in use in some facilities around the world. Samuel noted that with the necessary precautions in place to prevent access to unauthorized websites, the online-based training will reduce the hindrances caused by the unavailability of space within prison facilities. I recognize as well what they are making maximum use of is that of technology, internet-based training for um, inmates where they have their own either computer or tablet and a number of programs are actually pre-downloaded to, to this um, instrument. 
According to Samuels, the Guyana Prison Service is better positioned to realize its role of inmate reformation. It is receiving assistance from the British-funded Security Sector Reform Project and the Inter-American Development Bank's Citizen Security Strengthening Program. For InfoHub, Tiffany Rogers. The Guyana Forestry Commission presented the revised National Forest Policy Statement and Plan to Stakeholders. Here's that report. The comprehensive plan and policy statement was presented to stakeholders for a final round of consultation before it is submitted to Cabinet. Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman said the update was critical to meeting international obligations in the sector and the Green State Development Strategy. This strategy highlights the importance of forests in combating climate change and also emphasizes the ecological and environmental services of forests to humanity and the promotion of sustainable energy services. The forest policy statement is intended to guide the forestry sector's development for a 10-year period. GFC Commissioner James Singh explained. It is negotiated and informed by a wide range of stakeholder interests, guided by national priorities and development strategies. The National Forest Plan is the work program for the implementation for the policy and outlined programs, activities and the agencies responsible for leading same. This updated forest policy and plan replaces the 2011 document. The review began last Friday with nationwide consultation led by the consultancy group through funding from flight facilitation support. Following today's consultation, the documents will be presented to the Cabinet for approval by Minister Trotman. Crystal Stalnell tells us that the government of Japan on Thursday handed over $5 million US million to the Ministry of Finance to fund a project document which aims to strengthen women's disaster management capacities in Guyana and Dominica. The project, which is designed to last for a three years period, will be administered by the United Nations Development Programme. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan explained the funds will provide assistance to persons affected by climate-related issues, especially those in the hinterland regions. The project will focus primarily on women, whom perhaps are the most vulnerable section of the population that are exposed during droughts, floods, hurricanes, and other severe weather conditions. This grant will be used to assist in building the capacities of women in Guyana and Dominica to influence and shape the trajectory of their lives and the lives of their families in the face of frequent and recurring climate-related disasters. Deputy Head of the Mission of the Embassy of Japan, Honorable Yoshinori Akabe, pledged his government's support to developing countries affected by climate change. The United Nations, on behalf of Panasonic Incorporated Japan, donated some 120 solar lanterns to the public health and education ministries. The Ministry of Education would have selected 13 residential schools and centers from regions 1, 2, 7, 8, and 9 to receive these lanterns. United Nations Resident Coordinator Mikiko Tanaka said the Panasonic company is celebrating its 100th anniversary. She described the initiative as part of Japan's private sector engagement in helping developing countries. Crystal Stahl for InfoHub. Today, the Department of Engineering of the Georgetown Mayor and City Council gave media operatives a tour of some of the ongoing city projects. These included the rehabilitation of the Kiti Market Complex, the Cemetery Restoration Project, and the renovation of the Solid Waste Management Office on Princess Street. These projects, initially started in 2017, are being conducted in phases. For more details, check our website for developments on this story. Bedecked in gold and black feathers and sequins depicting the expecting prosperity in the golden oil industries and dancing to the pulsating music, performers on Thursday evening unveiled the Ministry of Natural Resources MASH Band. Here's our final report. Minister within the Ministry of Natural Resources, Simona Brooms, expressed her gratitude towards staff for showing their support for the approaching celebration. She invited members of the public to join the Ministry's band on February 23rd. Our team now... Um we are beyond potential. Uh, we are moving into um, prosperity. Um, as a people and as a nation, that is where we are. Um, what a time like this. What an opportunity. Um, um, on behalf of myself and the minister and the whole natural resources, we really invite all of you to come MASH Day. Join us. At this time, let me take the opportunity to wish all Guyana and all Guyanese people, a happy 40th year 
of our republic as a people and of a nation. I myself would be um, what better leader, leading by example on the 23rd. Costume designer Nilsen Nurse also urged members of the public to embrace their culture and enjoy Mashramani. This year, the ministry is collaborating with various entities under its remit, such as the Ghana Georgian Mines Commission, the Ghana Gold Board, and the Ghana Forestry Commission for Mashramani. Paul McAdam for InfoHub. Please note that this evening you can check out the adult Calypso finals at the National Park, the children's competitions at the National Cultural Center, and hang out after work with Banks on the Avenue on Main Street, Georgetown. On February 17, it's the children's costume float parade from Independence Ground to the National Park, and in the evening, it's the adult soca finals, which takes place at Durban Park. Check our website or Facebook page for more details as we bring you updates on Republic Day and Mashramani activities. Thanks for watching. Remember to connect with us 20 on our website and social media. Goodbye.